Hello and welcome to the introduction of the Lab Builder Unity Builder. The Lab Builder Unity Builder is there for building uh, Unity VSA storage on VMware Workstation. To get started, we first need to import the um, OVA file for Unity. This is done with install Unity minus OVF and then we give the pass to our downloaded um, OVA file. Um, in my case, it's in my personal download folder, so I browse for it. And once found the right file, press return and it starts the import process. During the import process, um, which is the normal um, OVA importer, we will adjust some values. Um, after the import is finished, um, I go into the VMX file and edit some stuff like SCSI controllers um, to make the virtual machine running on VMware Workstation. The whole process um, for importing takes less than a minute. Once the import is finished, the first step would be to generate a UUID for um, getting the license for EMC Storage Unity Virtual Storage Appliance. So once the import is done right now, we start the install um, Unity program again, and there's a special parameter um, for importing, uh, for generating the UUID. Um, it's called generate UUID and exit. It just creates a virtual machine, starts it. Um, once it's started, it has a UUID generated, then it ends the virtual machine and deletes it and puts out the UUID in the format that we need for the web page in order to register our virtual machine. You see now the um, virtual machine is starting and it immediately is stopping and now we have our UUID generated. I can take this UUID here, copy it, go to the registration page and put it in and then we get our um, Unity VSA um, registered. So let's see, I've prepared it already. Um, since I have already licensed it, um, it would not generate a key for me as you can only license it once, but you can reuse your existing license key for your UUID. The next thing is I start a, um, custom, UU, uh, a custom Unity installation um, with the defaults, which means all my network settings. Um, I choose all protocols, which is iSCSI, NFS, and CIFs. Um, and I want to create um, host entries for all of my lab builder hosts. Um, this also creates demo runs for it and in the first storage pool. I use the license file, I just download it. Um, um, make sure it has the same um, number as the UUID you generated um, before, otherwise the licensing um, will not work. I also want to add like six disks, so my template does not have any disks, so I add six disks to it and start the process. First of all, the Unity gets added some disks. Um, once the disks are added, the virtual machine is started. From this point, it takes up to 10 minutes to do the first boot. There's a normal installation process going on for the Unity, which means it creates a storage processor, copies over some boot files, and that's the normal stuff that happens during every installation. You see here are all my 10 disks and also all the network interfaces that we use. They are pre-configured or there's nothing that you need to adjust right now if you are using your standard default lab builder environment. We're now going to wait for this process to end. As I said, it may take up to 10 minutes and I will fast forward now to the point where we start to customize the Unity storage. Once the Unity system finished um, its first boot, I'm going to start the initial configuration. So there's a initial configuration task that I'm that I need to run, which is called SVC initial config. Um, even so, the Unity is already up. It needs a few more minutes to warm up um, in order to process that command. Therefore, I will also forward to the point where it's already done. which will normally take up to five minutes. So once the initial config is done, I am starting to upload the license file. Um, first of all, um, 
I accept the Euler, um, which means, okay, I'm fine. I accept the license terms. Um, I do this automatically with some UMCLI commands. After this is done, I'm licensing the system, change passwords, and do some other housekeeping tasks. So once the initial config is done, I'm going to pre-configure the disks, which means I um, assign them to a profile which is called Extreme Performance or to the Extreme Performance tier. I do this for each and every disk we added to the system. Then I upload the license file finally, um, which means the system is fully licensed. After this is done, I'm also going to enable SSH so we can now SSH into the remote system to see the progress of the customization and eventually react on some errors. Uh, normally, you wouldn't need the SSH implementation. Um, once this is done, I create the pool named vpool and add all the virtual disks I just created to it. So right now we have a fully functioning system with a virtual pool. Um, from there we can provision block storage as well as file systems for our NAS usage. Next of all, I'm creating a iSCSI target um, in order to have my systems to connect to it. Um, I also create the um, iSCSI host that I'm going later to connect, like a domain controller, um, like an AppSync server, um, because I said add all hosts to it. I'm also going to create exchange servers. Um, and for servers that need storage, like the exchange server, I'm also creating some LUNs, so those are pre-configured and match the actual deployment process of my lab builder for Exchange or SQL always on. Again, as this takes a few moments, I'm going to forward and also switch to a larger screen that you can see stuff that's going on in here. Once all LUNs are created, the system will start to create the NAS servers and uh, DNS entries. At the point where we need to configure a CIF server, the system needs to reboot because in order to operate a CIF server and join to the domain, domain um, the um, NTP service needs to run. And the NTP service normally requires a reboot of the storage processors. As we only have one storage processor in the virtual Unity system, it will create, uh, it will do a reboot of the system. So we will do the reboot automatically and we'll connect back to the system once the reboot is done. The reboot of the storage processor normally takes, again, also up to two to four minutes. Once this is done and the system is again up and running, um, we are going to create a CIF server on our NAS server one, um, which is the default CIF server for uh, my lab builder domain. Once this is done, I also create a file system for my CIF shares. So in this case, this is a 100 gigabyte file system. I can assign some properties for it, like um, for SMB3 and all that stuff. Um, once this is done, this file system will be exposed via a share. Um, in this case here, it's the root share and I enable continuous availability for that share. Um, I also start a uh, NFS server and the file system for it. So my system is also reachable via NFS. Um, so two file systems are right now created and two servers, one NFS server and one CIF server. Once the configuration has finished, we can copy and paste the um, URL for our management system 
So I copy this into my browser, accept the SSL connection, and it takes a few moments and the Unisphere user, uh, user Unisphere admin interface is loaded. So we log in with the default username and password, which you can see from the output. And after a few moments, our dashboard is loaded. From within the dashboard, you can see that we have a bunch of hosts created and already some storage allocated. If we go through the settings of our system, you see everything is screen with the exception of the um, remote support. We have a pool created, which is named vpool. We have some block LANs allocated in the system for our default lab builder hosts. And we also have a NAS server uh, and our iSCSI hosts already connected to the system. If we browse to our um, file integration, we can see the default file systems that I have created, and we can see the SMB shares and the NFS shares are already pre-populated. If we switch over to our domain controller, I'm going to maximize this one. We can go to Active Directory Users and Computers and can browse actually for the um, container that gets created in our Active Directory for the EMC NAS servers. So you can see here we have a EMC NAS service containers in our Active Directory and there is our default SIF server that we have created. We also can browse from the Explorer to that SIF server and see the shares that we have exposed currently via the first file system that we have created. That's also far for the installation and integration of our Unity system. Um, stay tuned for the next chapter where we create some hosts that are connected to the Unity system.